Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 18th video in the beginner's guide to Unity 6. This time we'll be covering interacting with objects using the Raycast script that we wrote last time. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So what I want to do here is I want to bring in another game object, place it over here somewhere maybe, and this will be like a treasure chest that we can open. So firstly, let's import that object. Let's go to our uh, objects folder right here and drag and drop this treasure chest into Unity. And as always, head to the pinned comment or the description and you can download this for free. Just remember to unzip it before you try importing it into Unity. So in the folder, we have two objects. We have this one, which is an object, and this one, which is a prefab. Let's drag and drop the prefab into our game right here. Uh, let's rotate it. Uh, in fact, should we rotate it? Let me zoom in. Let me have a look at it first. Um, yeah, let's rotate by 90 degrees. So minus 90. That looks okay. Now, this object itself has a couple of different ways to be set up. If we look at top swing and rotate on the Y, you can do that, which indicates that logically we should be able to do that on the X. So we can open that treasure chest. So how do we do all this? Well, we need to be able to have the um, actual Raycast know that there's a treasure chest up ahead. And it does look a little bit big, but that's fine. What we'll do is we'll put in an object which can be in place of this treasure chest. So having a cube would be quite relevant in this case. So let's go to game object. Let's go to 3D object. Let's go to cube. And let's place this cube roughly where the treasure chest is. And let's increase the size of it to roughly the size of the treasure chest. Probably a little bit bigger than the thing. Maybe around about there. That should do the trick. And let's turn off the mesh renderer. Next thing, what we need to do is on top swing, we need to add a animation to it so it swings open. So let's go to our animations folder. Make sure we are on top swing. Um, in fact, should we unpack the prefab first? Let's unpack it just in case. So let's right click prefab and unpack completely. Back on top swing, onto animation, click create, and we'll put open chest. And again, this, uh, this section will show you just how much everything you've learned can come together to create different effects. So let's press uh, the record button. And we're doing this on the X, so let's make sure we set it to one. You may need to type one and then type zero just to set that first keyframe. So over the course of a second, which is 60 frames, I want it to open to about there. So press record, head back to project, um, set the open chest as not loop time, head to the chest itself, the top swing, and go to the controller. We need to right click, create a new empty state, and then right click and set that as default. And we've done all this before, so we know why that's uh, the case, why we need to do that. Uh, let's press play and quickly check that the treasure chest will register as not opening and we should be able to make sure that our actual uh, raycast will hit it. So let's go to our player route. We can see there's our two target. So we're walking over to this massive chest and we're right in front of it. Excellent. So now what we need to do is if raycast is whatever amount, then we do the following, i.e. open it up, play that animation. So let's go to uh, the scripts folder. Let's right click, create a new script. And we'll say open chest. So in this script, what we'll do is we'll start by just simply saying um, if the raycast is uh, a, a small amount then just open the treasure chest so if we go and get rid of void start void update we don't need them at the moment 
Let's declare a variable, so serialize field. And let's have this as a float. And we'll call this um, internal distance. And now we think about it, we probably shouldn't have got rid of the update method, but it's fine. We can retype void, update, oh, close bracket, open curly bracket, and it doesn't need to be private, so that's fine. And what we'll say is internal distance is equal to raycasting dot distance from target, semicolon. So what we've done here is we've said that this script, the open chess script, is reading information from another script. And that's why this has to be a static variable. So as open chest can read that information. Next thing we need to do is we need to add in another variable to say, are we opening the chest? So we can say serialize field, and we'll have this as a bool, and then we'll call it chest open, and we'll make it equal to false by default, just in case. So what we'll do now is here in void update, we can say if chest open, is equal to false and internal distance is less than, should we say, two? I think two should be a good number. Close bracket, open curly bracket. First things first, we need to set chest open as true, just so as we cannot repeat this over and over. Next thing, let's add the chest as an actual variable. So serialize field in square brackets. And this will be a game object. And we will indeed have this as chest. It's predicting exactly what we're doing here. And that's really, really clever. It helps you code better. Now we'll say chest dot get component. And we've done all this before animator open close bracket dot play and then in brackets and quotes the name of the animation that we opened with the chest so let's go to animations let's click on the animation copy the name head back to our script close bracket semicolon and save now this is not the ultimate final way that we're going to be able to interact with this i just kind of want to put this in place and see what effects we have so we now need to attach this particular script to the cube that we put in place of the chest. Give it a moment just to compile. And if we scroll down to our cube and find the script that we just wrote, which is open chest, drag and drop onto the cube. I'm gonna rename this cube to chest trigger and let's now add the chest as a game object so basically we're adding top swing because that is the swinging motion that is the object that has the swinging motion for our chest now let's press play and let's go and take a look and it's already open so the reason that this has happened is simply because there is no trigger on there to uh, determine what we're actually looking at now what I will do here is I will change uh, my direction of my player just so as we can actually see this a little better. Um, let's put this as 90 degrees. Press play once again. And this is how interaction can actually occur. Okay, so it's saying that um, the chest actually opened. Let's double check why the chest opened. So. It does think, so internal distance is that. So let's press play once again and see what the internal distance comes back at without moving the mouse. And it didn't want to, okay. Right, what I'm going to do then is rather than let this make a fool of me, uh, let's actually move the capsule over here a little bit and see what that looks like in game view. Let me turn off the fade in. And let's press play and see what happens now. 
I suspect it may do the same thing, yeah. So let's now add some extra lines of code so that this can only happen when we look at the chest and when we press um, E, shall we say. So where we've got if chest open equals false, which it will be, and the internal distance is less than two, then chest open is true. So now before chest open is true, we say if and then input dot get key down and in brackets key code dot e close bracket close bracket open curly bracket delete this close curly bracket and then where we've got open chest hit return and then open curly bracket uh, sorry close curly bracket and what that does is we've now nested a couple of if statements we're saying that if chest is open is false and the internal distance is less than two, then check if we are pressing the E key to open it. And this is where the true interaction of a game object will occur. So let's save, head back into Unity. And when it's compiled, let's press play. It's taking just a moment to compile there, but that's fine. <clears throat> and press play. We do have an error at the bottom, so we'll have a quick look at that in a moment. So the chest is not opening, so let's take this opportunity to go on the chest trigger, scroll down, and take a look at these numbers here. So we're now less than two, so let's press E. And there we go. We now have the chest opening. Uh, let's get rid of that. It's not an important error. So one more time, let's make sure that this works. So it's all good so far. Chest is there. We can still go and collect some of these. Perfect. Now let's go and open this chest. E. Perfect. So there are many different ways that you can create a script to interact with objects, and there's more refined ways that you probably should create as well. But as this is only just an introduction to Unity 6 on the whole, this is where you would kind of go a little bit deeper, work with this script a bit more, and create more abilities to do things and interact with objects differently. For example, if you wanted to uh, interact with the ball that rolls down here, you wanted to pick it up maybe, you'd use the same principle. You'd use Raycast and then pressing the E key or R key or whatever to pick something up. So next time what we'll do is I want to create something where it will follow a path. So we'll do a little bit of introductory path following. So we'll create a script that will allow a cube to follow a certain path, maybe in a circle or maybe it'll go from one end of the map to the other repeatedly. Uh, but we'll be setting an object root. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload, and I will see you next time.